Hello and welcome to worship today. It's Sunday, December the 5th of 2021, the second Sunday in the season of Advent. A reminder that the words for today's hymns are found in the printed sermon document immediately below the link to the worship video on the St. Columba website. I invite you to join me in the responsive call to worship and the lighting of the Advent candle. A voice in the wilderness cries out, prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill be made low. The crooked shall be made straight and rough places smooth. A voice in the wilderness cries out, all people shall see the salvation of God. Lift up your hearts in expectation. We will lift up our praise to the one who is coming into the world once more. Peace is the light that sheds understanding. Peace is the promise of God. Peace is found when God's order and justice are brought to the world. We await the birth of the Prince of Peace. We light the Advent candle of peace. Let us pray. Source of light, Shine in our lives and in your world with your everlasting peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our Advent hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us join our hearts in our prayer of adoration and our voices in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of peace and promise, you are the giver of life, living in us through the power of your Holy Spirit. You are the voice that calls us from our wandering, setting us on a new path. You are the living water that purifies us, baptizing us for service in the world that so badly needs your love. Refresh us in this time of worship and reignite our desire to serve you each and every day. Glory, honor, and praise be yours now and always, Holy One, Holy Three, One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us join our voices as we confess our sins together. Merciful God, our baptism proclaims the washing away of our sin and the start of our new life in Christ. But we confess that we still live in sin. We sin against you and one another, in what we do and in what we fail to do. 
We excuse ourselves and take comfort in familiar habits and traditions. Forgive us when we mistake such comfort for the peace you offer us in Christ Jesus. Prepare our hearts to embrace new ways of following him. We pray in his name. Amen. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, proclaimed this hope. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, giving light to those in darkness, guiding our feet in the way of peace. Receive God's tender mercy today. Trust that God's peace will prevail for all those who seek forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is, O Jesus, I Have Promised. I invite you to join with me in our prayer for understanding. Let us pray. Holy God, through your scriptures, you have revealed your word in scripture to your people across many generations. In the fullness of time, you revealed your living word in Jesus Christ. Now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds and hearts to you so that we find new ways to follow you faithfully in this generation. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke 1, 68 to 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us. Oops. In the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of... Our second reading is Luke 3, 1 to 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, 
Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Aeneas and Cephas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Life is full of surprises. Packing up my dad's house turned up a few, like what my parents had hung on to for over 60 years of marriage. I was surprised by the temperature of the coffee in my travel mug recently because I'd forgotten I'd made a new cup. Ouch. Surprises can come in many shapes and forms. A Christmas gift. An unexpected visit from a friend we haven't seen for a while. The answer to the question, who done it, in a really well-written mystery novel. Waking up to the furry face of a dog looking over the side of the bed. Being able to handle more in life than we ever thought we could. The list could be endless as we all experience surprises in a variety of ways. And we know surprises can be good and fun or upsetting and hard to take. Like an unexpected diagnosis of an illness. When I think about the Christmas story toward which we are journeying journeying in these four weeks of Advent, there are quite a few surprises. Mary and Joseph were both surprised at the angel's announcement of Mary's pregnancy. There were a few reasons for that, and they each experienced the surprise differently. Elizabeth's pregnancy with John, that was another big one. The long-awaited Messiah was born in a stable not in a palace with attendants and caregivers galore. Shepherds had a night vision that just about knocked them senseless. And let's face it, God arriving in the form of a helpless newborn infant was nothing close to what had been expected for the coming of the Savior. Surprise after surprise fills the Christmas story. Surprise after surprise still fills our experience of it. I have a book titled Hugs for the Holidays that provides sayings and stories and reflections for the season we are enjoying. In the section, The Gift of Faith, it offers this inspirational message. At some point in most every person's life, the question arises, It usually begins as something of an observation, but then it grows into an acute awareness. Finally, it swells uncontrollably to the point that the words are formed by the mouth and spoken almost angrily. Where did the magic of the holidays go? When was childlike wonder replaced by anxiety and apathy? How did the spirit of the most wonderful holidays of the year escape my once expectant heart? The answers are simple. With the passing of years, the magic of the holidays is crowded out by the all too real world of worries. Childlike wonder is pushed beneath a blanket of self-induced stress. The expectant heart is smothered by a vast array of responsibilities squeezed into too little time. The result is that our faith in the God of wonder is doused with the cold water of simple human haste. Can the magic of the holidays be restored in the heart? Most certainly and quite simply. Take some time to enjoy the crisp winter air and the sparkle of the holiday season. 
Reserve a quiet evening to sit by the fire with loved ones so you can feast on each other's touch and treasured thoughts. Write down everything you're thankful for over a three-day period and then read the list in prayer to God. Renew your amazement at the most wonderful event in history by reading the biblical accounts of the birth of Christ. Above all, require yourself to slow down, look up, and ask God to reignite the light of this beautiful holiday season in your heart. You'll com- you can be assured that he'll do it. No one loves to surprise his children more than the creator of Christmas. It's true. How many times have you heard the story and still been amazed by its beauty and its mixture of emotions? Do you still marvel with the shepherds at the angel chorus? Does silent night bring tears to your eyes? And joy to the world give you goosebumps? Infant holy, infant lowly is the one that brings back the most childhood memories for me. My first solo at the age of five, standing at the front of Laura Lee St. Matthew's Church in Sarnia. My mom could only play the melody line, so that's how she taught me the carol at home. Then, because I wasn't used to singing with an accompanist, I sang it a cappella. It's quite a memory. And it surprises me every year because I get so busy with planning worship and preparing services and pastoral support support and the usual Christmas preparations at home that I forget the simple little things that make the season so special. We interrupt this Christmas chaos to bring you this important memory. The surprises don't end with the story of Jesus' birth. They keep coming throughout his life, his ministry, his teaching. He amazes the people gathered to hear the word in the temple when he is merely 12 years old. He catches John off guard by by requesting baptism. He heals the sick, raises the dead, calls the least likely into his inner circle, eats with sinners, turns everything upside down with his preaching and teaching. And then he dies, just like that. He doesn't try to defend himself. He simply seems to take the betrayal, the abuse, the humiliation. He isn't surprised by it like the disciples. He takes the steps to get the whole thing started as he reclines at a table in an upper room in Jerusalem with his closest friends. He is crucified, dead, and laid in a tomb, and everyone thinks it's the end of the story. But no, it's not. There's more. He is raised. God does exactly what was foretold and raises Jesus to life. Surprise! It shouldn't have been, but it was, and it was a good one, the best the world has ever seen. Born in a stable, died on a cross, raised in a cave. A pretty surprising turn of events for a king, but not this king. In a few minutes, we are going to share the symbolic meal that Jesus gave us to remember all of this. To remember his life and death, the good news of his resurrection and what it means for us, his legacy for those who believe in him. As we eat and drink together, we do so not in our usual manner. The pandemic has changed that, but it hasn't changed its meaning. Nothing can do that. This meal, no matter how we participate in it, reminds us of Jesus' sacrifice, forgiveness, and love. And that's what matters. Faith in what this represents matters. Faith in Jesus matters. May the faith we share and celebrate this day surprise you with moments of hope, peace, 
joy and love in this Advent season. And may you know the surprising, unparalleled, uncompromising love of God through the Christ who lives at the heart of it all. No surprises there. Amen. Our carol is the one that surprises me every year, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. As we are called to come to the table, we remember that this is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has prepared a banquet for everyone. All who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice, and all who are in love and charity with your companions on the way are called to gather around the table. I invite you to join in the responses for the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed and holy are you, O God, creator of all things. In the beginning you spoke, and at your word your spirit moved over the waters, bringing order, light, and life out of chaos. You knit us together, made us in your image, and breathed breath and life into us. When we turn away from you and our love fails, your love remains constant. When we wander off and follow ways of sin and death, you call us back to you, your will and your way, forgiving us when we return with repentant hearts. Therefore, with choirs of angels and archangels, and with those of every time and place, we give you praise and glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and tender God, in time you sent word to Mary that she would conceive a son and call him Jesus, and in him we saw your promises made flesh. Dwelling among us, we heard and saw good news. He preached unity among your people in your kingdom. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, 
and ate with sinners. In his suffering, death, and resurrection, he delivered us from sin and death and revealed your living, redeeming hope for all people. And when he ascended into heaven, your Holy Spirit came to be our counselor and comforter. And so remembering Christ's love, life, death, and resurrection, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ was promised, Christ was born, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we share these your gifts of bread and cup. That the bread we break and the cup we share may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, world without end. As Christ taught his disciples, we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. We break this bread, the communion in Christ's body, once broken. We drink this cup, communion in Christ's blood, once shed. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join us as we share in the bread and the cup, wherever you are and with whatever you are using for elements of communion this day. This meal is given to us as a gift of God. I invite you to join in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us, and we praise you for breaking into the world in your Son Jesus, our Savior. Send us out in peace, for we have seen, heard, and been fed by your grace. Keep us faithful and alert for signs of Christ's coming and lead us to live lives marked by truth and light. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and always. Amen. Our closing chorus is Emmanuel, and we'll sing it through twice. <laughs>